Tonight on Ham Nation, we have Fred and Anita from the Nashua Area Radio Society. They're teaching us about ham boot camp. We have a spotlight on a new ham, Kat Scogan's W4DXY, Amateur Radio Newsline with Don, Space Weather from Dr. T, and George Solder some connectors. Stay tuned for more. Ham Nation is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash ham nation. Ham Nation, episode 472, September 23rd, 2020, Ham Boot Camp. Hello, everybody. It's Bob Heil, and here we are again with another great Ham Nation, and this one is really great, so don't leave. Uh, this is going to be very interesting for everybody. Uh, first of all, Look who's with us. Valerie, Valerie, how are you? It's so nice to see you. We missed you. <laughs> yeah, I took a little time off. I was a little overcommitted in so many things, and there wasn't really much DX and contesting going on, but I'm back. So things are starting to look good. Contest season's gearing up. Big one this weekend. Uh, CQ Worldwide Ritty. The whole world will be on the air, so it's a good one to get on the air. Starts Friday night and goes through Sunday night. We'll be on, multi-single. And uh, sunspots are starting to look good. So things are looking up in the ham radio DXing and contesting world. And we put up a new four square. Uh, No pictures yet. We got a nice photographer coming out, K9NR, Don, our good friend. He's going to come out and take some good professional photos. And so I'll be uh, showing you guys that on a future episode of our our 80 meter four square. So back to you. We look forward to all of that. I know you always have exciting things you and Jerry are doing. So glad you're here, though. You're looking great and glad to have you back and all that good stuff. We also have a cat, W4DXY, will be with us in a little while. Very interesting young lady that got her license recently. And uh, she has quite a story uh, about uh, about why she got into ham radio, and she's just uh, going crazy. So we'll get into uh, to seeing what's going on with Cat here in just a little while. Uh, Don Wilbanks is not here. Oh. He's going to be here on tape. <laughs> and uh, Gordo is not with us tonight. He's got business. You never know where Gordo is. You know, he's probably on a boat saving somebody's life with the Coast Guard. He'll be here next week, of course. So. Let's uh, let's kick it off with uh, our our great friends Fred and Anita They're from Nashua, the great club that was number one club, and you're going to find out why. Fred, Anita, how are you doing? Everything okay? We're doing great, Bob. Uh, wonderful to be on Ham Nation again, and uh, nice to see Valerie uh, in the saddle too. This is great. Well, we're we're happy to have her back, and so why don't you just take off and. Um, Tell us what's going on, Valerie, and they've got a lot of things going on. So, Valerie, it's all yours. Well, thanks. Um, We're also going to be joined by Jim, um, Kilo One Bravo Radio Mike, Jim LaJoy. Um, But they've got a great club, very active club, man. I was perusing their website and... um, Lots of stuff going on, and so we're going to spotlight that club. I don't have the cool Bob's Club spotlight graphic, but it's the Nashua Amateur Radio Society, or NARS. So let's start with Fred. Why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about your club and what you've got going on? All righty. Well, we have a lot of programs that are designed to help people get licensed and get on the air. And we've been working really hard to take all of that stuff online. Uh, maybe we could bring up uh, bring up uh, the first uh, PowerPoint there, or first slide, if we could. Uh, yeah, the next one would be great. 
So uh, what I'm going to, if you flip to the next chart, yep, there we go. Um, uh, we've uh, been busy making a uh, pandemic lemonade out of lemons, I guess. Um, we've got a number of activities that we want to make available to everybody that uh, watches Ham Nation and pretty much everybody in the U.S. or in, in the case of boot camp and uh, our training and uh, so on, maybe the world. Um, we're going to be doing a QSO party and online contest activity this coming weekend. Jim, our activities uh, chairperson, is going to share some on that. Anita is going to talk about our licensing classes. We're fully online with Tech General and Extra, and uh, we have a, a, a big surprise relative to exams, as well as a program that's designed to help people get on the air and get active with amateur radio. And then I'm going to wrap up on some of our other training stuff. So um, this presentation is available on n1fd.org stroke HN Ham Nation 472. That's our episode. And all the links in it are live. So if you want to come back and look at this uh, offline, you'll be able to do that by uh, starting out on the website there. So let me turn it over to Jim to tell you about the QSO party. Hi, everybody. The NARS QSO party was born out of the frustration with the inability to meet in large groups. Um, it's based on the uh, North American QSO party rules and will run on 12, 12 noon to midnight on September 26th. It's a very easy exchange. North America is name, state, province, or country. Non-North America is name and DX. Points will be one point per QSO for North America. Non-North America is one point per North American contact. Is, I, so we, I have a question for you, Jim. Is oh, sure. does N one MM have this in their user defined contest? Do you know if they have that so we can use our N one MM if we do it? We 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 are using the um, the North American QSO party. We don't have our own definition, but but if you uh, okay. if you if you scroll down to North America, ours follows theirs close enough where you can use it. Okay. Um, good. So there'll be Very two good. categories. There'll be two categories, six meters and up, and then 80 to 10 meters. It's going to be single up, single transmitter only with 100 watt PEP max. Simplex con contacts only, no repeaters. For multipliers, each U.S. state plus D.C., every province and every country are multipliers. Total score is going to be total QSO points times multipliers. Electronic entries only with total claim points and a complete log in Cabrillo format. Um, logs should all include, should include all the relevant QSO information with the time and date in UTC with the band, call sign, and name. Logs are due seven days after the contest ends and can be emailed to activities at n1fd.org. My latest article with tips on setting up N1MM to log and score can be found at n1fd.org slant Q-S-O-P-A-R-T-Y. And certificates will be awarded to the top three stations in each category. Thank you. Have fun. And I hope to get you all in my log. And anybody can play, right? Not just anybody can NARS play. members? Sure. Absolutely. So everybody play. <laughs> <laughs> well, fun. I think we should bring Anita on. She's got some good stuff going on. So, Anita, why don't you tell us what you you guys are working on there? Okay, I'm going to talk about our license classes, and um, we can bring up the slide on that. Uh, we've been giving license classes for um, several years now, and um, we've been unable to do it now. We usually get together in a classroom at um, a local medical center that lets us do our classes there. Unfortunately, we can't do it safely uh, this time because of the pandemic. So we're taking our licensed classes online. Uh, we typically give a tech general and an extra um, twice a year, once in the fall, once in the spring. So here are the dates for our tech general and extra. Um, the tech is this coming weekend, the general, the end of October, and the extra class, which is a three-day class, um, will be the first weekend in December. Um, we teach the classes on, we're going to be teaching online via Zoom, um, and the whole class will fit in a single weekend. 
Uh, we're based on Gordon West manual, so we ask everybody to read that ahead of time to prepare. And our class, we give an, um, go through all of the questions uh, twice, actually, and we give a lot of demonstrations to help you remember and reinforce the materials. We've got a lot of great instructors. Um, they're all passionate about ham radio, and it kind of passes on to our students. Um, and we have a really high, a very high success rate. Uh, I believe it's over 90%. And we've licensed over 300 uh, people through Tech General, Combined Tech General and Extra. If you're interested in the class, uh, you can register online at n1fd.org stroke classes or contact me via email, classes at nwinfd.org. Um, you can see the picture there of Kenzie. Uh, she's one of our success stories. Uh, she was 10 years old when she got her extra license. Uh, she's K-E-1-N-Z-Y. And her dad is also a ham and a teacher. Um, one uh, piece of news, we just got approved to give license exams on, um, online. So we'll be giving those via Zoom to our students following um, following the class on Sunday afternoon. So you join our class, uh, you learn all about uh, tech, general or extra, and you can walk away with your license at the end. Wow. And then um, now you have to be, a you should probably be a member of the club to do that. So we're, we're, hopefully we'll go over that at the end. Um, do you you have a boot camp coming up too to teach you how to operate, right? Everybody, everybody, whether they're a member or not, is welcome to join all of these activities, including oh. our license oh. classes. So we and we also provide a one year membership in the club for anybody who graduates our class and passes their exam so that they can take advantage of our other mentoring programs. So no, no need to be a member. Just, um, you know, come on and join us and uh, get a license or an upgrade and we'll help you have some fun with it. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful. Now I know everybody gets their license and then they don't know what to do with it. So you've got a boot camp that's going to kind of tell people how to operate, right? Right. That's right. Um, you can bring up the next slide. So yeah, we've been giving license classes for a few years now, but unfortunately we found that only a small percent of the, the folks we licensed were actually getting on the air. So to solve that, we started up a program called Ham Boot Camp. Uh, it started out, we would invite people over to our house. We'd um, you know, help them get online. They'd make a few contacts. We'd tour our station and then, you know, our antennas. And then we would tell, you know, try to teach them what they need to know to be able to put together a station. Um, we helped them, like, program their HTs. We even did a little repeater net in our living room. Um, and then last fall, it grew to be part of the Northeast Ham Exposition, um, which was our local New England convention from the ARRL. And we get, doing it there, we were able to help um, almost 100 people you know, learn how to put together a station and get on the air. The ARRL noticed it and asked us to write an article, and we're now featured in um, this month's QST. Um, additionally, we're going to be doing our boot, <coughs> taking our boot camp online, just like our classes. We'll be doing a, a boot camp on Saturday, November seventh, starting at ten a.m. Eastern time, and anybody can sign up for that. Um, anybody in the in the U.S. Um, by going to nwfd.org stroke boot camp. Um, by what are you going to see at boot camp? We're going to have a morning session that'll be focused on what you can do with the tech license, and then an afternoon. A session that's focused on what you can do with your general or extra privileges. Uh, we'll teach you how to put together a station and how to make contacts. Uh, we'll cover VHF, UHF, as well as HF stations. Um, it will show you how to operate and also how to select equipment for your station. Uh, we're going to talk about how to program your HT or your mobile radio, uh, help people get on Echolink, uh, talk about fox hunting, how to operate satellites, and then for HF, how to um, build a station, you know, how to do FTA digital modes, how to put up an antenna and logging and QSLing. Um, and then after the, the uh, boot camp one evening, we're gonna have a follow-up session. Uh, we're, we're, we used to actually take uh, our students to a um, local ham store and help them figure out how to pick out equipment. Uh, we're going to do an online ham shopping trip to some of our favorite websites and look at gear choices that way. 
So um, again, for more information and also to register online, anybody in the U.S. is welcome. And you can go to n1fd.org stroke boot camp. Right. Can you pull that up, uh, uh, pull up that link for that uh, boot camp, the website? There, you go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so there you go. There's a lot there. Yeah, that's our you know. agenda the whole, um, yeah. for the whole boot camp, UHF, VHF. There's a and, lot going on. Yeah. So, it be a full and, day, um, but uh, uh, it should be a good day. And the feedback we've gotten from the folks that have done boot camp with us is really outstanding. Folks really enjoyed it. It's also a great opportunity for prospective hams. If you'd like to see what amateur radio is about and what you can do with it and what's involved in getting on the air, um, ham boot camp's great for somebody who doesn't have a license yet. Well, I can see why you guys were recognized as an outstanding club. This is amazing. And the fact that you don't even have to be a member um, is truly amazing because you're really uh, paying it forward, getting people involved in the hobby and, uh, um, that's just wonderful, just wonderful. So, uh, again, go to their website. You're going to see all the stuff that you need to do there. And it's the NAR or N Nashua Amateur Radio Society or NARS and, um, just amazing club. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Hopefully you have a lot of activity in that contest this weekend and all your classes will be huge. I heard you got over a hundred already for the boot camp. Is that right? Yeah, we're getting about five people signing up a day or so. Hopefully, we'll get a lot more. And uh, also, I know we're out of time, but we also have a lot of training material on just about anything you can imagine with amateur radio. So uh, you can see a list of what's available. We offer internet subscriptions for folks out of our area if you want to take full advantage of all of our training and mentoring. And all these activities that we talked about today um, are all available to you without being a member. So hopefully, we'll see some folks. There you go. There's the article. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. And uh, we'll hopefully see you in a licensed class or at boot camp. Sounds good. Thank you guys for coming on. Appreciate it. And thank you, Jim, as well. And uh, that's all I've got for this week. So I'm going to pass it over to Virtual Don, <laughs> right? There you go. Amateur Radio Newsline. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 2,238. These are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020. Amateur radio emergency operators had their hands full on the West Coast, the Gulf Coast, and all the way to Bermuda. Newsline anchor Paul Brown, WD9GCO, has the busy recap. As wildfires raged in the American West and hurricanes struck further east, hams were mobilized on the Pacific Coast and in the nation's Gulf Coast region to report and respond as needed. By Wednesday, September 16th, the voiceover internet protocol WeatherNet had secured, as did WX4NHC, the amateur station at the National Hurricane Center. According to Lloyd Colson, KC5FM, scores of weather reports were submitted for Hurricane Sally in the Gulf Coast and Hurricane Paulette, which hit Bermuda. By Thursday, September 17th, Aries had activated in northern Florida, anticipating Sally. Meanwhile, the Federal Emergency Management Agency declared the first two channels on the 5 megahertz band available for interoperability between HAMS and government agencies for both the weather systems and the West Coast wildfires. Amateur radio is secondary on the 5 megahertz band. The military auxiliary radio system was also prepared to assist with the response on the band as needed. Check-in opportunities have expanded for the Blind HAMS digital net, which has added a network bridge and a whole lot more. The Blind Hams DMR net had a quiet beginning, but now its voices are everywhere. On that first day, April 7th, 2018, only three amateurs checked in. The net was simply an idea that grew out of an online discussion hams were having on a mail server, but it was soon to grow to be even more. It is now known as the Blind Hams Digital Net and has an international reach with an average of 50 check-ins, a group that sometimes climbs to 76. The establishment of the Blind Hams Network Bridge gave more room to grow and there are now eight nets on the bridge. The hams also have a presence on Brandmeister Talk Group 31679. Thanks to Pat Patrick, KE4DYI, the connections support DMR, D-Star, Fusion, All-Star, Echo Link, Peanut, and Wires X. No radio? No problem. Even without a radio, hams can still be part of the action. Hams who are not on the air can join via the Peanut smartphone app or just listen to the chatter using the Alexa device, or they can stream audio from the bridge using their computers.
For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jack Parker, W8ISH. If you're stressing out about doing well in your first QSO party, try this low-stress, beginner-friendly one. When is the best time for a QSO party? According to the Nashua Area Radio Society, it's when the time of sporadic E is fading away, but the sun itself is starting to crank up the propagation possibilities. So the party is scheduled for September 26th and 27th, and the Radio Society promises something for everyone. That means all modes permitted except for those modes using repeaters and all bands are permitted to except for the work bands. Activity will be in two categories, VHF only for six meters on up and all bands. Organizers are calling this QSO party an easy and low stress introduction to contesting, which also makes it ideal for newcomers to radio sport. As the Society website says, the goal is to get as many people as possible on the air. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With Paul Brown, WD9GCO, Jack Parker, W8ISH, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the News Desk in New York, and our news team across the globe. I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. Now here's the solar update from Dr. Tamitha Scove, WX6SWW. We have a coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, a bright region emerges on the sun's far side, and it's time to check in again at the Red Planet. Those stories and more in the news this week. Although it is official we are in solar cycle 25, the solar activity sure is taking a while to ramp up. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see there aren't a lot of active regions on the Earth facing disk right now. We do have a region in the southern hemisphere, but it's getting to fizzle out a little bit. It hasn't given us all that much. However, we do have a remnant coronal hole that's gonna be rotating into the Earth's strike zone here over the next couple days. It could give us a small burst of fast solar wind that could bring aurora down to high latitudes, but not much else. And it doesn't look like there's a lot else going on on the front side. However, as we switch to our far-sided sun, now this is stereo A and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see the sun looks pretty bland, except in that eastern limb in the northern hemisphere. Oh my goodness, look at that bright region that's beginning to rotate into stereo's view. This is the region that we believe was shot that massive uh, solar storm off of the sun's west limb a short while ago. And as it rotates into stereo, view we're going to be checking to see if it's flare active and if it's giving us any activity at all to know whether or not it might be a solar storm producer meanwhile it's definitely going to boost the solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders here over the next couple days as it rotates into earth view but it doesn't look like it's going to give us any radio bursts and that's good news for radio comms for space traffic and now for your martian minute it's been about a month since we checked in at the Red Planet, and thankfully, as we've moved past the winter solstice, the dust storms seem to be finally calming down. As we take a look at the Martian atmosphere over the past month, using the Themis imager aboard of Mars Odyssey, we see at the beginning of August, we were still getting some strong dust-ups in the plains of Asperia, which is southeast of Jezero Crater. And remember, Jezero Crater is where we plan to land the Perseverance rover sometime next year. Then in the second week and the third week of August, we got multiple dust ups in Gale Crater near Curiosity and also in the Isdis Planitia, which is just right in where Jezero Crater is. So that area has been a little bit of a problem for a while. But luckily, as we started moving into uh, September, things at least near Jezero Crater have begun to die down and calm down. We are still having issues in Gale Crater, which is expected because it's much closer to the equator. So it takes a much a little bit longer for things like dust storms to kind of die down a little bit. And hopefully as we continue moving in through September, we will see those areas calm down as well because we definitely don't want to see a lot of dust storms anywhere near 
either InSight or Curiosity rover. And speaking of, in Gale Crater, right now, Curiosity is enjoying a balmy th minus three degrees Celsius. The low is a minus 69 Celsius. And at Elysium Planitia, which is just a little bit higher latitude where InSight is, InSight is seeing a high of minus 14 Celsius, a low of 90, minus 96 Celsius, and the winds are out of the west-northwest at six meters a second. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone sometime later this week. So at high latitudes, no is expected unsettled to active conditions, but, but with up to about a 15% chance of a major storm. So we should get a little bit of aurora show from this at high latitudes. At mid-latitudes, however, we are expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have about 20% chance of active conditions. And who knows? This may actually get a little bit better as time goes on, but it's hard to say because this coronal hole is kind of, it's a remnant coronal hole, and that means the fast solar wind will be a bit patchy, and it's hard to really tell whether or not the aurora at mid-latitudes is even worth chasing. So if you're an aurora photographer at mid-latitudes, only if you're dedicated should you go out after this one. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, and that should make you GPS users very happy because we have no risk for radio blackouts on Earth's day side, so GPS reception should be pretty top-notch. However, we do have some boosted solar flux. As you can see, the solar flux should be boosting uh, possibly into the mid-70s, the balmy mid-70s by the end of the week, and that is due to a region that is rotating into to Earth view from the sun's far side. This could be a, a sunspot region, so it is boosting that solar flux. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you should notice your propagation continuing to increase and get better and better on Earth's day side throughout the course of this week. Now, also because we're still beginning to climb out of solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is a bit more intense than we'd like it to be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So although we are officially in solar cycle 25, I mean, we've kind of known that since about December of last year, but it's definitely nice to get that official stamp of approval to know that we're moving on up. I wish the sun would get the memo because right now activity is pretty quiet. Now we do have a remnant coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days, and that could give us a little burst of fast solar wind that could bring aurora down to high latitudes, maybe a skosh at mid latitudes, but only you dedicated aurora chasers should you even bother if you're at mid-latitudes to go see if you could catch the aurora because it's going to be elusive. Now amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well we're barely hanging on to that low edge of marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side, but we do have a reprieve because we do have that bright region that's going to be rotating into Earth view from the sun's far side here in the next couple days and that could boost us a little bit higher and maybe get us close to the mid-70s. So expect radio radio propagation on Earth's day side to boost up just a little bit here this next week. Now GPS users, well you know we really aren't dealing with any big solar storms right now and it doesn't look like this fast solar wind is going to cause us any problems and because the solar flux is still low even with that boost coming from that new bright region, I guess this means that GPS reception should be pretty good for you, definitely on the day side but also likely on the night side. I'm Tamitha Sko, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching. All right, there she is, the amazing Tamitha. I hope all of you are taking uh, notes because it looks like we're going to have some uh, some nice conditions coming up. So thanks, Tamitha. We really appreciate you coming on every every week and letting us know where to go and what to do with our uh, our transmitters. Well, I have a um, a very special guest that. I came across, and I, I think um, all of you know how how I am about new new people that come into this hobby. Well, uh, I found a good one, and I want you to meet Cat W four D X Y. Cat, how are you doing this evening? Are you good? I am good. I, it's so nice to have you with us, and um, I uh, I want you to. Uh, to tell us a little bit about how you got into this hobby and along with us I've I've got 
uh, the queen of uh, Ham Nation, which is Valerie, and she started out probably much like you. So, Valerie, I, I want you to to meet Cat and uh, you to uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on. Valerie, you doing okay? I'm doing good. I don't know if I'm the queen. Prefer princess. No. Um, nice to meet you, Cat. Congratulations on getting into the hobby. You're gonna love it. Um, Amanda and I just have so much fun with this hobby. So, um, hope you enjoy everything and get on the air and make sure you plug a microphone in, in because <laughs> that's going to be your strength. You're going to get some nice pileups. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's, let's hear a little bit of your story, Kat, about how you got into this uh, crazy hobby and uh, how you're enjoying it. Go ahead. Okay, well, I got into this hobby because my dad um, had his general, and he was involved in that. Um, him and his best friend ended up getting their tech together, and then they ended up getting their general to together as part of prepping. And so they're both big into the whole prepping world, and so that's how they got started. And then when he passed away in December... I came across this call sign and I remembered how he used to bug me about it all the time. And I really wish I had gotten into it with him when he um, was doing it. I want to know also about uh, your, uh, your website and stuff that, uh, that I have seen around. Tell us a little bit how you formed this and uh, what you're doing at DX, uh, Dixie DX. This is pretty cool. Go ahead. I created uh, Dixie DX. I noticed that there was not a lot of YLs as YouTube creators, so I wanted to bring that to the forefront and get more YLs involved and to inspire more people and let them know that ham radio is not just a guy's hobby, it's a girl's hobby too. And I am plan on getting my general and doing that as well, and I've had some help along the way. Um, from S Steve, uh, K I four K W R and John K K nine W <laughs> and they're both extras. So they've helped me out quite a bit, especially, uh, doing the state QSO party. So I've already had some pileups Val. So I'm glad, uh, <laughs> you mentioned that. Yeah, here's a, here's a good picture of you. One of the expeditions. <laughs> was, well, I'm sorry was to hear about your dad, but I'm glad you got involved in the hobby. And there's just so many well, things that attract women to this hobby, and we should have more people in it. Um, because there's just, I mean, some women focus towards public service or, or like competitions like contesting, you know, women can be competitive too. I love contesting and DXing and, you know, trying to work, talk to people all over the world. So there's just so many different things that's not exclusive to men, you know. So it's great that you're trying to bring more women in the hobby. And and um, so that's wonderful. And I'm sure your dad is smiling down on you right now. Yes. He would be very proud of me right now. Cat, tell us, I want to run through a couple of pictures and tell us uh, what we're watching here on the screen. What, what were you doing here? Go ahead. I was contesting. I believe this was the um, North Alabama QS, no, this was the Alabama QSO party. So this was actually the state QSO party. Lovely picture. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and these are just one, the, some, uh, and that's with me visiting uh, Giga Parts. Um, that's Steve, uh, KI4KWR. So he's been a great help um, with helping me out with the uh, QSOs and everything like that. And I've been borrowing his uh, I, uh, IC7300. Uh, well, you can't get better than that. That'll be a that'll be a, a great thing for you to start with. That's for sure. And uh, being friends with Gigaparts, I'm sure you'll be able to to get the best gear, and uh, they'll help you along the way. That's that's going to be great. I uh, I, I know that. Uh, 
that those guys are helpful to all amateurs, but it looks like you have a, a little bit uh, better bond with them. That's really super. I appreciate that. And uh, you, you, you got to tell me about this picture, Kat. Well, that was uh, taking uh, many, many years ago. And that was just me sitting at five guys having lunch with a friend. And uh, he ended up taking that picture. And that's Chicago Bears because I'm a huge uh, Bears and Cubs fan and Black Hawks, Black Hawks uh, and, and Bulls fan. Wait, where are you from? I'm from Alabama. Oh, okay. But my kids are named <laughs> after um, Chicago Bears and Chicago Bulls um, players. Okay. Well, one other thing that we want to talk about here before I get away, this uh, the last slide is really good. You can explain some of this, and uh, we've got some places uh, that will be able to guide people, and this is one of them. Go ahead. So this was a, a interview I did um, with other YLs with Hayden from Australia. And so you have Rhea, you have Linda, and then you have Mary Catherine and her husband, Joe. And then we have this for everybody. I want you to take a uh, take a, a notice and write these down because this is where you can find Kat and all of her, her, her lady friends that are into amateur radio. And we hope that you can help them along the way. We, we love seeing new hams and especially the ladies because sometimes they don't get the uh, – the real recognition, but we do here because we 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 know how how hard it is sometimes to to get on the air, and uh, you've made that happen. So uh, th that's a good place to, to find you and uh, um, look you up on QRZ. There's also an, an, some nice things said there. So uh, any uh, any other things you have, Valerie, that we might want to talk about with her? No, I just want to welcome her to the hobby. The more the merrier. And I'm glad you're getting out there promoting and trying to get more women involved. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. Um, thank you so much for joining the hobby. Welcome. Yeah, we we really appreciate you being here, Kat. And uh, you might want to hang around. I think we'll have a room here at the end. Uh, uh, maybe the chat room might have some questions, too. So. We really appreciate you coming on, and I look forward to getting to work you on the air with your 7300 real soon. Is that okay? Oh, yes. That's perfectly fine, Bob. Um, right now, my house is getting built, and it's not complete yet. So once it gets up and going, the 7300 is going to be the second purchase after the house the uh, fence has got to go up first <laughs> i hear you well we'll have you back on and uh, later on when you get that house all finished your tower up and all that so we'll, we'll look forward to having you really get involved in this wonderful hobby and thanks for taking your time to be with us on ham nation tonight so seven three and we'll uh, we'll talk later thank you 73 thanks bob uh, that's great well i um uh, I want to see what George has been doing. I know he's got his soldering iron somewhere. So, George, how are you doing? You uh, you doing okay? I'm doing well, Bob. Uh, yeah, I did get the soldering iron out this week. So we'll have some solder. But uh, I didn't get around to the smoke because I didn't actually plug the project in. <laughs> That's sometimes how you get to the smoke. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well, we'll be looking at that here in uh, just a moment, but first let's get a message from ICOM. Get out and be active with ICOM's new IC705 and its optional multifunction backpack. The IC705 is your perfect QRP companion as you have base station features and functionality at the tips of your fingers and a portable package covering HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. This compact rig weighs in at one kilo, or just over two pounds, with RF direct sampling for most of the HF band and IF sampling for frequencies above 25 megahertz. Five watt battery operation with BP272, or 10 watts with a 13.8 volt DC supply. Modes include single sideband, CW, AM, FM, as well as full D-Star functions. 
a large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, and live band scope with waterfall. Integrated GPS with antenna and GPS logger, micro USB connector, Bluetooth, and wireless LAN, and there's a micro SD card slot. It comes standard with the HM243 speaker microphone, and it supports QRP and QRP P operations. The perfect accessory for the IC705 is the LC192 optional backpack with a special compartment for your IC705 and room for accessories for soda activations or just a day in the park. The IC705 has now received FCC certification and ICOM expects products to be shipping to dealers by the end of September. Visit icomamerica.com amateur for more information about this and all the great ICOM radios. And actually, those radios are shipping to dealers right now. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm not a dealer, but I received this from FedEx yesterday. It's the IC705, so I know they're out there because I've, I've got my hand on one right here. However, I'm going to be giving this one away. I'll tell you about that in a minute. I don't get to keep it, but let me just say I have thoroughly enjoyed playing with it for the last 24 hours. I come invite you to enter after each episode of Ham Nation for some great swag prizes like t-shirts and hats at icomamerica.com slash ham nation. While you're there, you can learn how you might win in the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio. And for September, that new radio is the ICOM IC2738 dual band dual watch mobile simultaneous VHF, UHF, VHF, VHF, or UHF, UHF receive. It's got a large high contrast display for easy visibility, rugged mill standard 810 construction, weather channel receive with weather alert. There's an optional Bluetooth module available as well and free downloadable programming software. So visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this and each episode, and register to win. Well, speaking of this IC705, let me tell you how you could win this exact one right here. Or you could just say, George, you can keep it. I would be happy to do that. We're coming up on 15 years of AmateurLogic.tv next month. On the 16th, we plan to shoot our 15th anniversary episode. We'll be giving away this ICOM IC705. All the details are available at amateurlogic.tv slash contest. A couple other things to go with that as well. Uh, first, let me show you this right here. This is the optional backpack. Unfortunately, it is back ordered right now. They should have some of those soon. But uh, that is a great pack. You can see the radio fits right in the top of it there and leaves you a lot of other room for storing additional items. You might want an antenna to go with that. Well, you probably will, and we'll include an MFJ 2289 PKG big ear antenna package along with a tripod and the carry bag. And a power supply, well, how about the portable MFJ 4115 12-volt supply and headsets. You could do no better than the Heil BM-17 headset, purposely made for emergency communications, but great for portable operations as well. And one other prize we're going to throw in with that is a set of Forrest Mims Engineer's Mini Notebooks. These notebooks have helped me a lot over the years. I've taken a lot of the circuits out of them, combined them, and built things that I wanted to build. As well, you'll get a copy of the latest edition of Getting Started and Electronics by Forrest Mims. So go to amateurlogic.tv slash contest after the show tonight and get the details there on how to enter to win. It's very simple, and you don't have long to enter because only a few weeks left we'll be giving that away. Well, tonight on Smoke and Solder, I did a little soldering this week. Uh, it's nothing fancy. It's just a, a project I was working on, and I thought I'd share it with you. This week on Smoke and Solder, I'm going to show you how I like to install a three-conductor, one-quarter-inch phone plug. 
I'm using some three conductor shielded cable here. I'll use my wire strippers to take the jacket off, being careful not to nick it. Next step is we'll peel back the foil shell here. And under that we'll expose the two insulated conductors as well as the drain wire which was connected to the shield. Now I'm going to measure back and see how much of the center conductors I need to trim. I'll clip back the red one. I'm going to connect that to the tip. And I've got the jacket just inside the stress relief. Then I'll clip back the black one a little bit shorter because it's going to be connected to the ring and doesn't need to be quite as long. I'll twist the shield and fold it back out of the way for the moment. We'll trim it later. Now I'm going to strip off a little of the jack of the two center conductors. Just a slight amount here. Not much, because when we start heating it to solder, that jacket might shrink back. Next we'll tin the wires. You should always do this whenever you're going to solder and want a good connection and don't want things to get too hot in the process. A little solder on the leads there really helps it flow a lot quicker when you start soldering it to the connector. The stress relief on this connector is two little tabs that you bend over over the jacket. The jacket on this cable I've got is a little small. We could crimp down on that. But there's a trick I like to do on cables like this and it also gives you a little extra stress relief. Just so happens a piece of RG59 jacket that I stripped back here is perfect for slipping over that wire. It fits tight and it makes the wire bigger around which means it'll crimp better down in those tabs and also provides a good stress relief better than you would get from a piece of heat shrink tubing. Another thing you need to do at this point before soldering slip that shell down over the wire. Yeah you can thank me for that tip later and if it's got insulation that goes inside, slip that down as well. You'll want to tin the connections on the connector before you begin. This is a used connector and it's already been tinned previously, so I'm not going to do it. There's the tip, that's the ring, and this is the sleeve. The ground connects to the sleeve. The tip is usually the left channel in stereo, and the ring is usually the right channel. Now we're going to solder it. I've got the wire through. I just put a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron where it meets the connector just to get it started flowing. And I'm basically heating up the connector here and the wire. I'm not just dobbing solder on the end of the soldering iron. I'll do the other one. And you'll notice how quick this goes. That's because I'm using a good quality connector. I'm using a good quality solder and soldering iron. And they're all clean. Only takes a moment with the right temperature iron and clean connections and good connectors. And there's no reason to overheat the connector or use excess solder. Use just enough to do the job. Now we'll have to do the shield as well. So we'll thread the cable through on the stress relief where it needs to be. We'll fold that wire over. It's already been tinned. And now we'll just apply a little bit of solder right there to that connection. Notice how smooth that flows and how quick it goes when you're using the proper materials. Makes all the difference. That's it now. We'll just clip back the excess there of the shield. And then we need to crimp down on the stress relief so that the wire doesn't get pulled out of the connector. I'll just use a pair of needle nose pliers to do that. Now 
And we'll make sure it bites down good into that jacket so that there won't be any stress on the wires themselves. Once I get that properly done, it's time to screw back down the shell. Of course, put the insulator over first. And we're finished. And this is how I like to put on quarter-inch phone connectors. Now this happens to be a good connector. That is a switchcraft. That's the good stuff there. They cost a little more. Well, actually they cost a lot more. But they're really worth it in the long run. And these can be reused. This one had previously been used. I just took the old wire off and cleaned it up. And it's ready to go. Practically like a brand new one. Thank you, George. We appreciate uh, the soldering lesson there. Um, all right. Well, it's too, it's unfortunate Kat left us. I, I was going to ask her a couple of questions. That's all right. I'll start with um, what I've been doing amateur radio related this week. My goodness, I have been busy. So one, my, one of my ham friends and I did a 28 student career chat panel yesterday morning. This was really interesting. I've never done this before in my life. Uh, where we did a Zoom class and all of these uh, kiddos a 10th and 11th grade sat through our presentation and we basically described a whole lot of things of ham radio, but let's face it, you can't put that in 45 minutes. So we discussed most of the basics and then we got, then they're just chatting with us online and you just see the, kind of like I do all the time here every week, I see the chat room and I take the questions and we had some amazing questions. So I just wanted to give a shout out to the JFK High School in uh, Denver, Colorado. Thank you so much for inviting us. So we had a blast and I wish I could show a snippet of it just so you guys could see the interaction. But I honestly think that going to more of these uh, virtual school systems, I think it's going to give us a little bit of opportunity to get in there a little bit more. Um, make sure you uh, make friends with some teachers out there and give them some alternative class lessons that they could bring in. And that would be, uh, you know, amateur radio. All right, uh, Valerie, I'm going to go to you first. Um, how you been? You look fantastic, by the way. Thanks. I'm good. We're good. We're healthy. We're doing good. So did you, um, there was a couple of contests that we didn't get announced by you. Uh, have you been doing some contesting while you've been at home? Yeah, we did IARU. Um, we did the um, stay home uh, COVID one. Um, we were qualified to get in the drawing to go to Finland or Venezuela or Brazil. I can't remember, but um, we didn't win that. But <laughs> so, yeah, we've been keeping busy. We put up a, a new antenna, you know, a four square for 80 meters. So that's a lot of work. And um, this weekend, we're definitely going to be 48 hours. Normally, we do multi-single and we have like three or four guest ops come in. So we're going to try just Jerry and I doing all 48 hours. So we'll see if we have enough energy to pull that off without falling asleep. So, um, <laughs> But we'll be on the air this weekend. So hopefully I'll get to work a lot of you guys out there on Riddy. Absolutely. And if, if you're not a Riddy person, there's a couple of QSO parties going on this weekend uh, as well, I think. Uh, or no, that's in two weekends. Uh, the California QSO yeah, party California is a big QSO one. Party. Yeah, California QSO party, uh, first weekend in October. That's the first contest I ever entered. That one's a lot of fun. And uh, you will be busy because it's a big state. Absolutely. I We went camping this last weekend and I was a... Uh, Working a lot of um, the Washington, the salmon run. Oh my goodness, there was a lot of operators on doing that. I, I was blown away. I'm pretty surprised. So, um, let's see what else did I have for the list tonight? Uh, question wise, Cat, if you're still watching, um, I, which I hope you are. I just wanted to say, I'm really sorry about your father and your loss in December. That's just really sad. And I'm so glad you got into amateur radio for the exact right reason. And I think I'm going to take your sentiment and say, I wish I would have gotten into it sooner. I think once we all start in the hobby, we all say to ourselves, boy, I really wish I would have known about this or been interested in it sooner because it's so joyful. Wouldn't you agree, Val? 
Absolutely. I say that. Every, I wish I knew this hobby. I didn't even know this hobby existed. You know, I got into CB radio in the 70s when everybody else was doing that. But uh, I wish I knew about this then. I mean, and I was thinking about this too earlier. The best thing about this whole hobby is the friends. Seriously. I mean, I've had some friends throughout my life. Um, but here is lifelong friends. Everybody would give the shirt off their back for you in this hobby. I mean, uh, it's just wonderful. I just love this hobby. I can't say enough about it. The same here. I just, now I know I've worked enough people in the United States that if I go traveling anywhere and I'm stuck somewhere, I can look up a friend. I'm, I'm going to be able to look up a ham radio operator <laughs> and call for help if I need anything. <laughs> Bob, what do you think? <laughs> There's no question because I, I sometimes uh, uh, feel that, uh, I could have got into it earlier, but I got into it when I was 15. That's 64 years ago. <laughs> so I have really enjoyed this hobby. It's It's been the, the lifeline of, of our several careers, actually, and uh, still there. But uh, I really enjoy helping people, and that's what I do today. I'm on this computer almost all day answering questions that people, uh, you know, hey, what I do about this? What kind of connector? And how did I do this? And I got RFI here. What did I get rid of it? And, and I help these people. I love it. And it's not always selling a product. It's just helping people. That's, I think that's the whole the whole basis of everything hams do we we help everybody but um, uh, we're going to have uh, we're going to have another report from cat we'll we'll wait till she's really into this gets our 7300 going and uh, giga parts guys will help her and uh, she's going to be very excited i could see that and uh, so we'll we'll make sure that happens um, right now, I'm looking forward to the weekend because I want to check into that boot camp that Fred and Anita and Jim have going, that a fantastic club, and I, I invite everybody to do it. If you want to know more about it, it's in the new QST. Um, check it out. There's the cover of uh, the QST. Check it up. It, it, uh, these are things that... Uh, no matter how long you've been in this hobby, you can always learn more. But I like it because you can just learn to meet more people, as you said, Amanda. So that that's basically what it's all about. And, of course, I love building things. And I've got a couple of projects going over here on some of my AM transmitters. But, hey, the main thing is that we can share, uh, share all these experiences. And, uh, and George had a great thing tonight with how to put a connector on. A lot of people would say, well, well, I don't know, big deal. Yeah, it is. It is because there are right ways and wrong ways, and uh, that's what we try to do here. So I appreciate all this going on, and you gals have really been a lifeblood of, uh, of Ham Nation, and I appreciate it. Well, thank you, Bob. And um, uh, there's speaking of possible marathons, I, that I have to bring George into this conversation. Um, George, Tommy, and Mike uh, from Amateur Logic chucked me under the bus the bus uh, last night and asked me to run their net uh that was a lot of fun by the way we got about um george i don't know what we actually ended up with i don't know what the final tally was with busted call signs and things like that but i think it was around um 70 wouldn't you agree oh george isn't here oh i my apologies okay oh well Let's put it this way. We had a lot of fun on the Amateur Logic uh, sound check net last night, and Jeff and I definitely enjoyed uh, being a guest at NCS. And we took check-ins from Echolink, All-Star, D-Star, P25, Fusion, Analog. Um, anything I'm forgetting there, Jeff? DMR, so NXDN, and the Hamshack hotline. So about seven different modes for you to possibly check into you had a great time and uh, chatted with a lot of folks that are very 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 big ham nation fans so i appreciate everyone checking in there and giving us the support also got the most check-ins ever on that net so <laughs> we're number one right now <laughs> i had to boast about that a little bit all <laughs> right um I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my portion here. It looks like we've got 20 meters and 40 meters this evening. We've got uh, 
20 on 14268, I believe. If not, listen a little bit up or down. You'll you'll hear Steve W7 UDI out there. And KC7 uh, FPF is running 40 meters around 7199, I believe. And we have a D Star Nut on 14 Charlie and DMR Nut on 31012. So you have no excuse. You have plenty of opportunities to check in one way or the other. So go out there and support our nut controls who do such a wonderful job every week. Um, back to you, Bob. Okie dokie. Well, it's been fun tonight. Really, really nice to uh, have you back, Valerie. I know you've been busy. I'm waiting for you to come back and tell us about, what was it, 40,000 feet of radials? Is that what you said? 42,000 feet, I think. I lost count after the first 10,000 feet. Jerry uh, knows what? the numbers. It's insane. I'm sorry. I missed it by 2,000. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, for those that don't understand, she's going to come back in a week when she's got all good pictures. There's a definite reason you need all this when you have a serious antenna farm and she, they've got one. But uh, thanks for coming on. You, you look great. And I hope that uh, you'll be back real soon and uh, get some contests going so you can tell us all about it. So thanks very much. And greetings to Jerry if he's around. Well, I think that pretty much wraps it up here. And uh, I want to. Tell everybody again, you want to join this uh, this, this boot camp. Uh, okay, I, I've been a ham at almost 65 years, but I want to go to this. I love doing these things because I learn things too. But um, it's going to be good. It's uh, what N1FD. Uh, just look up Fred's, uh, Fred's call, AB1OC. This club is absolutely phenomenal. It's why they the number one club in America right now, because they just do crazy stuff. It's so well done, and uh, we all learn from it. So we'll see you there. Otherwise, we'll uh, catch up with you somewhere. So uh, I'm about I I got to head over here right now because I'm gonna fire up and uh, record this show for Saturday night. If you're not listening to WTWW, you want to do that on Saturday night at seven o'clock uh, Central. I fire up the theater organ and we uh, have three theater organ under the arch is what we're calling that show, and I love playing for everybody. So check it out. Until then, have fun. Dial up your ICOMs and your whatevers, and we'll see you on the air for darn sure. But we'll see you back here next week, and uh, more fun for you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Appreciate everyone being here. 7-3, bye-bye for now. I'm Jason Howell, host of Hands On Android, where each week I take a look at the Android operating system, really dive deep into what it can do for you and how it can improve your quality of life, whether it be tips and tricks on how to use it better, whether it can be little known secrets that open up a world of possibilities. So many topics to dive into, including your emails. Subscribe by going to twit.tv slash HOA. We'll see you there. Bum, da, 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 da,